Hi, this is Sunday Gardner. Welcome to Online Travel Boss TV. Today we are going to go over how to create a profitable Facebook group without killing yourself in the process. So, uh, before we get started, let me introduce myself. My name is Sunday Gardner, your online travel boss. I come to you every week talking all things launching, operating, and the mindset of a successful travel business owner. So I'm excited to be here. Today, what we're going to be diving into is the hot topic of Facebook groups. Now, before we jump into the do's and the don'ts and what you should and should not do, let's see from uh, the people who are joining, who have joined us, uh, a couple of things that I'd like you to use your fingers on it to uh, let me know where you are in the audience today. So, today, what I want to know is: is do you have a Facebook group, um, but you don't have any engagement? If you want a group, but you have no idea how to get started, if you'd like to have a Facebook group, you've heard that they're the cat's meow, but you have no idea how to actually get it started. I've had groups, Facebook groups for um, as long as I can remember. And at one point in my, uh, you know, leading of a group, it took me more time than a full-time job to manage the group. The whole idea here is that everybody is hearing about, you know, how amazing Facebook groups are. And if you're a travel business owner, you may be wondering, how can I leverage the power that everybody is telling me about Facebook groups? And so that's what we're going to talk about today. But before we dive into the topic, let's talk about why even a Facebook group as a travel business owner, right? Why should I even care? Why should I waste my time on yet another part of the platform that I don't understand and don't understand if it even isn't going to bring me value? So let's talk about that. Now, as I mentioned, I've been, I've been a facilitator, moderator, owner of a Facebook group for my businesses for now going on five years. So I've had a variety of different Facebook groups. Right now, I have two main Facebook groups. I have this group, the Travel Boss group, and then I also have the Inner Circle, which is where I uh, show up for my clients who are students of our program. So currently I manage two Facebook groups, but I have managed Facebook, Facebook groups, um, similar to the one that we have now, the travel boss group. I've managed it for salon owners. I've managed a Facebook group in the past for Facebook, for all type of entrepreneurs who are interested in learning about Facebook ads. And you know, what I didn't have that I have now is I really didn't have a strong strategy on how to take that Facebook group and make it profitable and make it part of an aggressive sales engine. And that is what we're doing today. And so we're going to talk about how you do that in, 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 in this, in this, uh, in this lesson. So, but before, before we do that, why even, why even have a Facebook group? Like what's the value proposition besides monetizing it and making money? So let's talk a little bit about that. So the first reason why, uh, Facebook groups are the cat's meow, as I say, is because Facebook is putting all of their money into groups, right? But I want you to think of Facebook groups as another word or another thing. Think of them as a community. Think of them as a place where like-minded people will come to congregate around a message that you will facilitate, right? Now, that's pretty strong, right? That can be a little bit heavy for some of you. When you think about, right, a community, I'm going to facilitate it, a community of people like-minded, like what? What is all that, right? You know, all I want to do is sell travel. I just want people to buy my packages. I don't want to have a community, <laughs> But the reality is, is if you have a community, what a community does for you is it positions you as an authority figure, right? It positions you for you to show up in your community of people, right? As an authority for the topic that we're, you know, uh, the topic that we're going to do. So now people are throwing Facebook groups left and right, you know? Maybe you, you joined, you know, and became a, a, a travel business owner because someone invited you to a Facebook group and told you about the opportunity, right? That's certainly a way to do a Facebook group. I've seen Facebook groups for people who sell the $5 jewelry, right? And they're selling their jewelry in there. That's a way to do Facebook groups. But how can you as a travel business owner create a community, right? Of people that are like-minded 
where you will facilitate and show up as an authority figure. How do you do that, right? So we're going to talk about that. But why is that even important? Why do you want to do that, right? Because people buy from people that they what? Know, like, and trust, right? So if you create a community where people can know you, get to know you, like you, and start to trust you, don't you think it'd be easier for them to spend $5,000, $10,000 on your group packages or your packages or your fit or whatever it is that you're selling in your travel business? Don't you think it would be a lot easier to sell if you were selling to people that already knew you, Right? Do you think it would be easier to sell to people that already knew you, knew how amazing you were as a travel business owner, and they already liked you? Would it be easier, right? They came and they listened to you because they knew that you had valuable information that would give them what they needed, and buying from you was easy right? That's what a group does for you. It creates an environment for which to buy from you is natural because you're showing up as the person that they would buy from, right? So we're going to talk about how to put all that together, but really the first reason why having a Facebook group is so important is, is because people choose to opt into it, right? It's not something that's forced on them. People choose to opt into a group, right? So they've made a conscious choice to be a part of the thing that you set up, right? So they're willing, right? You're not throwing, you're not sliding in their inbox because they're unwilling. You know, they don't know you. They don't, you know, it's not, it's not a, it's not a forced interaction, right? People opt into groups. That means they want to be in the group that you've created. And we're going to create a group that they're going to want to join, right? So we'll talk about that in just a little bit. So, right, the number one reason to have a group is because it's a choice that people make. So if you create the right kind of group, then that means people are going to choose you as opposed to being a victim of you rather, you know, so to speak. Number two reason why you want to have a group is because it makes people feel like they're a part of something bigger than themselves. People like to belong. At the end of the day, 2021, highly technical world, we're removed from everyone, which even further reinforces the fact that people want to belong to something, right? So groups allow people to connect on some common ground and you're going to create that common ground. We'll talk about that in a minute, right? So that's the number two reason why groups are so powerful, right? It gives people the sense of belonging and connection that they want, right? And then the number three reason why groups are like the cat's meow for your travel business is because you get to control the narrative, right? You get to control the messaging and the what that people will consume inside of your group, right? So when you join someone else's group and you try to, you know, pick out clients out of there, you're under their rules. But when you own your own group and you market and grow your own group, right? You get to control the narrative. You get, get you get to control who says what, what gets said, the messaging that you want, the people that you want to work with, the people that are in your group, you get to control it, right? So I'm not a control freak, so to speak, but when it comes to who I work with, I am right? I want to control who I work with. I want to control who's in my sphere, right? I want to control the type of person that is my ideal client, right? So I get to do that when I'm in a group, right? When I control the group and I facilitate the group. So with every bit of work, there's also some reward, right? You get to control who you work with, who you let in, the messaging that is in the group, right? Have you ever been in a group? And I've been in many groups, right? I'm, I, I'm like, a groupie, right? So I've been in a lot of groups. And so, you know, I've been in a group and where all you see in the group is people just posting, right? And nobody's interacting. Nobody's talking. It's just a bunch of posts of, you know, random stuff, right? Nobody likes that kind of group. That's not really an interactive group. That's not a community, right? But I love the groups where people are talking. People are communicating. They're, they're giving thoughts. They're responding, right? There's interaction. There's activity. Those are the kind of groups that I enjoy being a part of, right? Don't you? Don't you enjoy being part of groups where you feel like you have a voice, but there's something that's important or things that you're interested that are being talked about? 
right? And that's the kind of group that you want. So it's important that you create a group for your travel business, right? That's going to be a value to the people that you want to join, right? So what I find a lot of people do are the things that we're gonna talk about now, or some of the mistakes that people make when they get ready to create a group. The first mistake that people make when they create a group is they don't have a strategy around it. They simply create a group and there's really no thought process around it. They create the group, they name the group, maybe they have a description, they have some rules and they start inviting their family and friends. Right. So they haven't thought about who they want in the group. They haven't thought about what the group's purpose is, why even have the group. Right. And they just start inviting people and they start asking other people to invite people. Right. And that's not selective. Right. The groups that I have are selective. Right. I don't just have random people in here. Who who's in this group? Travel professionals, <laughs> right? I don't have people who want to learn how to fly an airplane. I have people who are my ideal client in this group, right? The type of person that you want in your group, you need to define that and be selective about that, right? So that's the number one mistake that people have when they create a group is that they, they just create randomly and they just start, uh, they create the group and they start just inviting everybody in the group, right? It's not selective in terms of the audience. So that's the number one thing that you want to make sure that you don't do is don't make that mistake. The number two mistake that people make when they create a group is they just start throwing up all of this information. They're posting in the group. They're in the group 24 seven, and there's no scarcity about your availability and or what it is that you offer, right? So why buy from you when they don't have to? Does that make sense? Let me say that again. Why buy from you when you're going to give them all of the information that they need to go buy themselves, right? So most of the time what happens in groups is you create the group, you start inviting every unselected person, and then you spend 100% of your time in the group, right? So everything that you have to offer, people can get for free, and there's no reason to buy from you. Right. So that's the number two mistake is you show up too much in the group. And then the number three mistake is, is that oftentimes people don't even sell anything. They don't even offer anything. Right. So you're this business owner, you, you know, or you haphazardly offer a, you or maybe you're offering too much. Right. So it could be that you're offering you have too many offers too frequently, right? That's one problem. The other problem is, is that you don't even have an offer and that you don't ever sell anything in the group, right? So you really aren't monetizing it. So it's either, you know, it's one extreme or the other, but there's not like a happy medium that you've created. So those three big mistakes are things that we're going to talk about avoiding. All right. So are you guys ready for the steps in terms of creating a profitable? So we've talked about now, you know, what it takes, why groups are important. We talked about the three mistakes that you should avoid when creating your group or running your group. Let's talk about what my strategy is that I teach my clients in terms of how to run a profitable group. So step number one is identify your niche, right? That's something that I say in everything that it comes to this travel business, right? Is make sure that you identify what your specialty is. So even when you create your group, that group needs to be around some specialty, not random, not just general travel. Again, I don't want you guys being jack of all trades, trying to sell travel to every, you know, every person who wants, who's got a passport. That's not what we're doing here. We want to be very specific about what it is that we're servicing and who we're servicing right? So niche, specialize, and then identification of your audience. So that's step number one, right? So somebody write in the uh, notes, right? Step number one is identify your niche. Who will you be servicing in this group? Who is it that you want in this group? What is the common theme about the people that will join your group, right? Is it, you know, my favorite example is wedding specialist, a wedding destination specialist, right? So if you specialize in weddings, right, who do you want in your group, right? You don't want your neighbor, unless of course your neighbor is engaged and about to get married in six months, right? That's who you'd want in your group. You want people who are engaged. You want people who are about to get married and preferably people who are about to get married who want to do it in an untraditional way, right? Right. What if you, you know, you specialize in romance travel, right? Or wellness travel. Who do you want in your group, right? You need to think through not only your specialty, but the who of what you want in your group. Number two, step number two is 
build a group around it. So now that we know what it is that we're specializing in, who we want to service, let's build a group around it. So let's using that same theme, we're going to do a wedding destination specialist, right? What kind of group should you build? Well, a wedding, a wedding destination group, of course, right? So if I know my specialty is weddings and I want to specialize in wedding uh, groups, I want to then, I want to be able to create a group around wedding destinations, right? Now, you, you say to yourself, but there's a million wedding destination groups, right? But they're all doing them wrong. <laughs> so let's talk about how we do it right. How do you create a niche specific group and do it correctly, right? The first thing is, is that you specialize. You make sure that you specialize. You have a niche, you identify your audience, and then you have a creative name around your group that is going to connect to that audience, right? So if you do weddings, right, it should be something that makes the audience Audience know that it's for them. That's number one, right? So you want to build a group around that. And then the number three thing that you want to do is you want to attract your ideal client, right? And that's easier said than done, right? So what did I say the mistake number two is, is that, or even number one is that they, you create a group and then you just start inviting people because you're excited about getting the numbers up. You want a thousand people, 10,000 people in your group, but who needs a group full of people that are not their ideal audience? That's just noise. We don't want a noisy group. We want an effective group that that, that that is going to be who we want in it. So again, carrying the same theme through, I specialize in wedding destinations, right? I want women, men, couples who are about to get married between six and 18 months, right? And preferably, I want couples who don't want to get married in their local area, but in an untraditional type of way, right? I want to do that. So how do I attract them? How do I find... First of all, these married, these engaged couples, right? How do I find them? How do I know that they're six months out, 12 months out, 18 months out? How do I microscopically identify these people, right? Is it possible to do that in Facebook? Well, hell yeah, it is. And it's called Facebook ads, right? So yes, you can microscopically find your ideal client in Facebook, because they're on Facebook, and not only are they on Facebook, Facebook gives you the power to be able to find them. That is the beauty of Facebook. So, you know, I talk to a lot of, you know, prospective, uh, you know, existing travel business owners or, you know, people who are want to be travel owners or are thinking about launching. And one of the questions that I always ask people who are who are in the business and have been in the business for a while is have they, you know, have, how do they get their clients? And, you know, a lot of people will tell me social media. And I'm like, okay, well, what do you do in social media? And they'll tell me, oh, well, I'm posting on social media or I've done Facebook ads. And everybody, I'm just going to burst your bubble. If the only thing that you've ever done when it comes to Facebook ads is hit the blue button that says boost, you are really not using Facebook ads. What you're using is a feature of Facebook advertising, but you're not really advertising using Facebook's face uh, ad ads manager and the engine that they have for you to select audience, right? So if it hasn't worked for you, I'm going to bust your bubble even further. Facebook ads boosting is not intended for selling. It's intended to get likes. That's exactly what that particular feature is intended to do. It's intended to get engagement, likes, reactions from the people that see the post. That's all. That's it. There's about 15 types of ads that you can run on Facebook, right? And it can be a bit overwhelming if you've never done it, right? So that's what I teach people. I teach people how to take this big, powerful engine and utilize it to find their ideal client, right? And then the strategy that we're talking about is specifically find your ideal client so that they can come into your group. And then what do you get to do with them? You get to build a relationship with them, right? You get to show up as the authority figure around your niche and your specialty and give them what they want, right? That's power. Like it excites 
excites me every single time I talk to a prospective client, right? Some new travel business owner that's got this amazing vision about their, their business. And they say to me, yes, I want to do fill in the blank with my business. And I want this type of customer. And I'm like, we can find them. We not only can we find them, I think your vision is great, right? So when you work with me, that's one of the questions, not only am I going to ask, but my client support team is going to ask you is, do you have a vision, right? So I'm going to stop just for a second and ask you, like who out there has a good vision for their travel business? And I'm not talking about the vision where, you know, I want to make some more money. That's not a vision. That's a job, right? I, I want to make money too, but that's not really a vision, right? Tell me in the comments, who's got a great vision for their travel business. And if you feel like sharing, share it. If not, that's okay, right? Because those people who have a strong vision, and what I mean vision is that you know exactly how you want to show up in your travel business. You know the kind of services you want to provide, and you know the kind of people that you want to work with. If you have a strong vision, type a one. I, and if you don't, that's okay because you can develop it. But I want to tell you, it's so much easier in your business if your vision is strong right? And I want to work with you if your vision is strong, right? Because if you already know that and you know what you want to do, I teach you how to do it, right? Does that make sense, right? I don't really, it's hard for me as a coach to teach you, teach you, you know, to inspire you, (laughs) right? Or to give you, uh, to give you vision, right? Or desire, right? I don't want to do that as a coach. What I want to do is I want to give you inspiration and a path to deliver the vision that you've set for yourself. Does that make sense? Because there's a big difference. So I ask everybody, you know, coming into our program, if they have a vision and is it clear? And it's okay if it's not clear, because I can help you with that clarity. But again, your desire to be of value to your clients is something you got to bring to the table, right? So those people who have strong visions, I stopped there just a minute just to let you know, because once you have a strong vision and you know who you want to work with, what I'm trying to calculate in my head is, can we find them on Facebook? There's a two point some X number billion people on the platform every single month across the world, right? Your ideal client is on Facebook, period. End of story. You know, they may be on other platforms, but hell or high water, they're on Facebook 99% of the time, right? And not only that, there's all this power that Zuckerberg has given us at our fingertips that allows us to harvest that power and find the people that we want to do, right? That's, that's, That's still, you know, after 10 years doing this, I'm still like excited by it, right? Because I can find whoever I'm looking for. And as long as I've got the right offer for them and I put that offer in front of them, it's a numbers game after that. So if I can get in front of my ideal client and I can pitch my offer to them, right, in a non-salesy kind of way, I'm going to get them into my stratosphere, right? Or into my web, so to, so to speak, right? And that's what you want to do too. And your group allows you to do that, right? Because the ad is non-invasive that we write to get your people into the group, right? Okay. So that's number three. I think we are right. So now one of the mistakes I told you that people make is they create a group and then they start throwing up in the group, right? Blah, blah, blah. Right. Do this. I got this. I got that. I got that. Right. They're showing up five days a week. They're doing lives every day, right? They don't sleep. They don't do anything. They breathe and live this group, right? So they're showing up so much that they don't have time to work. They don't have time to do anything and it's freaking exhausting because I used to be that person. I used to be the person that like, I mean, and, and so I tell my clients, treat your group like you do your third child. And what do I mean by that is, is like, if you, if you don't have any kids, you may not understand the analogy, but I have three children. And so the first child, man, and there's a Pampers diaper, diaper commercial about this, right? So Huggies is like for the first kid, right? You buy real expensive diapers for the first kid because you don't know any better, right? You're like, my first kid's got to get the best. I don't want not pee touching him. By the time you get to your third kid, right? You know, the diaper doesn't get changed for 10 hours, right? He's in Pampers all day, right? Just as long as he's, you know, he's still speaking, breathing, and he's happy. That's all you care about. But all the expensive and all the stuff that you do is not necessarily Same thing with your group, right? You don't need to show up in your group every single day for you to have a successful, profitable group. 
Let me say that again. You do not need to show up every single day for you to have a successful, profitable group right? You do not need to write in your group three or four pieces of content every single day for your group to be successful. That's not necessary, right? You don't need to show up live two, three, four, five times a week for your group to be profitable, right? Does that shock any of you? Are you guys surprised by that, right? Most people are surprised, right? So the number four thing that's important is not the fact that you show up every single day, but that you're strategic about your show up, right? I'm going to say that one more time. Number four is about strategic content in your group that is so, and I wrote this, right? I put strategic content and that you show up and you add value. Notice I didn't say that you show up every day and add value. I just said that you show up and add value. And so if you do that as little as one time a week, that can be good. If you do it one time every other week, whatever you decide, just be consistent about it. Make sure that there's consistency and that your, your community understands that, that that's what the, that's what the cadence is. You get to control it, right? So you get, you get to control the narrative, right? Again, I want you to say you get to control the narrative. So if that's one time a month, you're going to show up live one time, a you know, whatever that's going to be, train the audience and your community to expect it. All right. So, you know, somebody, somebody says in comments that, you know, it's overkill when you show up all the time. Right. But again, you know, we've got this sense of, you know, we need to show what, and, and let me, let me just tell you, cause I, again, I've created many groups and the idea of creating the group is, well, it's like your baby, right? So your first baby, you want to pour into it and you want to give, you know, you want to give it love. And then, you know, the, the biggest thing that was just so um, exciting for me when I first did my first groups was I loved interacting with clients like or prospective clients because they weren't even paying clients at that point. You know, so I just loved interacting. I loved like talking to them in messenger. I loved talking to them in post. I loved like, you know, the responses from people. Right. And don't get me wrong. We're all humans at the end of the day. Right. So we you know, when you when you do a post and you get likes on your post and people are responding, it does feel good good, right? But sometimes what happens is we get hung up in that emotional feeling that we get from the likes and the responses, and we're not strategic about the content, nor are we showing up in a consistent way. And we really are more focused on building the relationships than building a business right? I've, I've been guilty of it, right? I was so, I was so enamored by making sure that all my graphics were color coordinated and, 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 you know, and they had a theme. I remember being on Instagram and spending, I remember days and hours trying to get the theme, the, the Instagram three theme color coded. And my brain is not artistic, right? So I would like drive my graphic artist crazy. I was like, no, but the flower needs to be on this post and it needs to be here, right? Because if you're an Instagrammer, you know, you got that nine pattern and post it. And then I was trying to reuse them on Facebook. I mean, it was a God awful mess. Like we spent more time trying to coordinate my Instagram post to Facebook post than we did making money. Right. And that's what happens oftentimes when you're running a group is that you spend more time on trying to get everything to look pretty and, and, uh, make you feel good and get more likes and, and more of this and more of that. And you forget really what the, the, the value proposition is show up in the damn group, Provide some nuggets and some value to your group and sell. <laughs> Period. That's what the group value is right now. If you want to have a feel good group, right? And you do something else on the side, that's great. But if you want to have a profitable travel business and you want to use a, pro, a, 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 a amazing engine, marketing and sales engine, your Facebook group will do that for you, right? But be strategic about the content that you deliver in the group. Do not overkill it when you show up in the group and add value, right? Make sure you understand and you're connecting to the audience that you are, that you're there to service, right? It's just another vehicle for you to provide service and value to your clients, prospective clients, so they can get a taste of what it's going to be like to work with you, right? All right. So that's number four. Number five, and then I'm going to skid out a lot of here is don't forget to sell. <laughs> So what did I say the number three mistake is, is that you, you show up in the group, right? You're, you're throwing up in the group. Maybe you're throwing up packages or maybe you're not, and you don't even sell. Like I know people who have groups, hundreds of thousand people in their groups and they don't run one promotion. 
that will not be you. <laughs> that will absolutely not be you. Now, 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 don't get me wrong. Do I believe that there are groups that you can have that, that the value of the group is not to monetize it? Yes. But why? Let me burst the social media bubble. I'm not on social media for friends. I'm on social media for business, right? It is an amazing way for me to connect with strangers quickly, right? Show my value, provide value to a community of people and um, do it like, like that, right? People can see me. They can decide if they like my voice or not. I was just talking to my team this morning and I said, you know, you know, if people who watch my videos, they can determine right away if they like me or not, right? Because they can determine if my voice irritates them or it doesn't, right? Right? So you can connect with people so much quicker on social media. So, you know, I threw out social media for personal, I don't know, maybe six years ago. I'm on social media for business, right? Now, I'm not trying to tell you how to live your life. So you live your life however you want to, but I'm going to tell you, I'm not on social media to, to, for my friends. I'm on social media. I mean, sort of like I'm on social media a little bit for my family because my husband is from Jamaica and his, his, his whole family is in Jamaica. So I post pictures for them very little, right? But I make him do that on his page, right? My page is for business, right? My, my presence on social media is another way for my perspective and my existing clients to connect with me, right? So if you can let go of the personal connection side and all the that that comes with it, right, and utilize social media for the powerful engine that it is in terms of creating social connections to people and building relationships with people that you potentially want to work with and do work with, it becomes uh, it becomes, it becomes a powerful tool. It becomes a powerful marketing tool. Somebody says, I sound like Wendy Williams. I don't know if that's good or bad, but how you doing? <laughs> I love Wendy Williams, you know, so right, wrong or indifferent. So that's number five is do not forget to sell inside of your group, right? And the thing is, again, don't overkill it, right? Don't be trying to sell packages every single week, right? Make them scarce, make them strategic in terms of when you offer them, right? The content that you relate, if you know that you're getting ready to do a package or you're going to do a service, right? Obviously the content that you're going to be doing is going to be leading up to that, right? It should be a scarcity, not that, you know, People should know that you sell travel and that they can contact you and you should have a process by which for people to contact you and purchase travel through you. But when you run promotions, it should be a promotion cycle where there is anticipation, there's excitement, you build it up, right? And then you're, you're enrolling and buying, uh, people are, you're, you're selling, right? That's kind of the, the cycle that you want to follow. So it shouldn't be every single day, right? It's not a blue light special at Kmart every, every week, right? It's specials that you're going to get only at finite times. And that's how you are effective monetizing your group. All right, that's five ways. And those are the five steps that we follow inside of Travel Passions to Profit um, in terms of building up that client attraction system. So that's what I have to offer for you. So to be profitable, you just are rinsing and repeating. You're not even rinsing and repeating the group part. You're just rinsing, you know, you're rinsing from number three to number five, right? You're attracting clients, you're growing your group, you're delivering strategic content and you're running promotions and you're just rinsing and repeating, rinsing and repeating. And you're doing it so much that your group is growing, right? You got people in your group that you are actually running through a sales cycle, right? And you're converting. And again, it's a numbers game. I want you to think of, you know, and I, I tell, I tell you all regularly, and I don't want you to forget it, that you are sales and marketers, right? If you think of yourself other than that, then you are not in the game properly, right? If you don't think that you are a marketer, and a seller of travel, then you are not doing this game, this business game properly. You are a seller of travel, right? That means you need to have a sales process and you are a marketer of your business. That means you have to market and attract your ideal client. Oftentimes you don't know who that is. Oftentimes you're trying to sell to everybody and you shouldn't be, right? So those are the things that you want to hone in. And once you do that, getting a group around the niche, running Facebook ads to uh, uh, get the right people in your group, nurturing those leads and then converting them into paying clients becomes a machine that you can turn on and off at your will, right? 
If you like this message, don't forget to like and subscribe and hit the notification for next week's episode of Online Travel Boss TV. You have a great evening and I will talk to you soon. Listen, I come here every, every week talking all things launching and operating a profitable travel business. And it is my hope that you can take your Facebook group, make it profitable inside of your travel business. And I'd love to help you do that. It was great talking to you guys tonight and I'll talk to you soon. If you like this episode, then share it. Sharing is caring and don't keep it to yourself. Spread the word. Another way to support this channel is to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel or leave us a message. Join us inside of our free Facebook group, The Travel Boss Group. Better yet, if you think you need help, schedule your free travel business launch diagnostic call. Links are mentioned below. This has been Sunday Gardner, your online travel boss. See you again on the next episode of Online Travel Boss TV.